Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. The title of this lesson is Tithe. Tithe. This is a second part to this lesson, or a part two to this lesson, to give some better clarification of tithe and tithing. Okay? So once again, brace yourselves, tighten up your jaws, do not turn to the left or the right, or you will get hit in the mouth, where to walk the straight and narrow way of the Most High's commandments. All right. Let's go ahead and go through the scrolls like we normally do, that we, we can verify the words of the Most High as it pertains to tithe, who it's given to, why it's given, what it's used for, etc. All right. We will start off in this lesson in Exodus, the book of Exodus, and we will read from chapter 30. The book of Exodus, and we will start at chapter 30. We will read verse 11 through verse 16. Verse 11 through 16 of Exodus chapter 30 reads, And Yah spake unto Moses, saying, when thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto Yah. When thou numberest them, that there be no plague among them, when thou numberest them. Now, the house of Israel, we are not to number the congregation. Governor David, he did this. He numbered the congregation, and the Most High sent a plague on the whole congregation because this thing ought not to be done. So, we're about to be numbered here. But in order for every man to save his own soul and no one gets killed, you have to pay a ransom for your soul. All right? And now we're going to read exactly what that ransom is. That way, when this number is taken, that no one is killed, there's no plague upon the congregation. Verse 13. This they shall give, everyone that passeth among them that are numbered, half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. A shekel is twenty giras, and half shekel shall be the offering of Yah. Verse 14. Everyone that passeth among them that are numbered, from twenty years old and above shall give an offering unto Yah. Verse 15. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel. When they give an offering unto Yah to make an atonement for your souls. So we see here clearly there is no specification as far as a percentage here. It's simply stating that we are about to be numbered in order for a plague not to come upon you or to come upon the congregation, everyone that's 20 years old and upward, okay, they are to offer up this amount of money, okay, and once that money is offered up, that will be a ransom for their souls. Now, let's look and see exactly what that money is being utilized for. Verse 16. And thou shalt take the atonement money, because this is what this is. This is atonement money, okay, of the children of Israel, and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, that it may be a memorial unto the children of Israel before Yah, to make an atonement for your souls. Okay, so you understand clearly exactly what's taking place here. Yes, in this instance, we're actually giving money. Okay, we're giving giras. Okay, we're giving uh, shekels. But it's being given because we're being numbered. That's to ensure that no one is killed. All right. And once this money is taken up, it is being used for the sanctuary, the service of the sanctuary. Okay. Service of the tabernacle, so to speak. All right. So we've read uh, Exodus chapter 30, 11 through 16. And now we'll go to the book of Numbers. Let's go to the book of Numbers chapter 18. Going to the book of Numbers, chapter 18. That way we can get a detailed understanding of tithe. All right. We're at the book of Numbers, chapter 18. 
and we will start off at verse 8. Chapter 18 of Numbers, verse 8, and it reads, And Yah spake unto Aaron, Behold, I also have given thee the charge of mine heave offerings, of all the hallowed things of the children of Israel. Unto thee have I given them by reason of the anointing, and to thy sons by an ordinance forever. So, all the dedicated things that's dedicated to the Most High is given to the Levites. Okay? And that is an ordinance forever to Aaron and his sons. You cannot be a priest of the Most High unless you are directly of this man Aaron's bloodline. A man from Issachar, a man from Zebulun, okay, a man from Judah, or any other tribe cannot be a priest. You must be specifically of the house of Levi, specifically within the house of Levi, you must be specifically of the house of Aaron, or of the bloodline of Aaron. Okay, verse 9 reads of Numbers chapter 18. This shall be thine of the most holy things, reserved from reserved from the fire, every oblation of theirs, every meat offering of theirs, and every sin offering of theirs, every trespass offering of theirs, which they shall render unto me, shall be most holy for thee and for thy sons. So every offering, meat offering, sin offering, any offering that we offer up to the most high, okay, shall be the priest, okay, and it shall be most holy for Aaron and for Aaron's sons, because the Most High has a covenant with Aaron and Aaron's sons that they will always be his priest forever. No one else can hold that post. Okay, now, verse 10, verse 10 reads, In the most holy place shall thou eat it. Every male shall eat it. It shall be holy unto thee. So of all of these offerings that we just mentioned in verse 9, Okay, the males are to eat it, and they're to eat it in that place that the Most High chose. Okay, you just can't eat this stuff anywhere. They are to eat it in the most holy place, and that's the only place they're allowed to eat it. All right, verse 11. And this is thine, the heave offering of their gifts, with all the wave offerings of the children of Israel. I have given them unto thee and to thy sons and to thy daughters with thee, by a statute forever. Everyone that is clean in thy house shall eat of it. So, as we have just read here, the heave offering, the males and the females of Aaron's house can eat that. Okay, but these are specific as far as, remember the last time we read from the first video, that the clean and the unclean, could eat of the heart, okay, and the roebuck, all right? Now, also, here is specifically saying that it's just the clean, and this, this doesn't specify clean and unclean. This is just those who are clean can eat of this at this point, okay? Now, verse 12, all the best of the oil and all the best of the wine and of the wheat, the first fruits of them which they shall offer unto Yah, them have I given thee. So all the things, the first fruits, the wine, the wheat, the corn, etc., everything that the house of Israel will bring up to dedicate to the Most High is the Levites. So you understand that to this point, okay? Now, verse 13. And whatsoever is first ripe in the land, which they shall bring unto Yah, shall be thine. So anything that's being brought up by the children of Israel unto the Most High is actually to the priest, the priest, the Levites. Okay? Shall be thine. Now, everyone that is clean in thine house shall eat of it. So all the things that's dedicated, everyone that's clean in the priest's house can eat of it. Verse 14. Everything devoted in Israel shall be thine. So once again, everything that's devoted in the house of Israel that has to be taken up to that temple is the most high is telling the Levites it's going this is going to be yours. 
So when we take up any type of offering, make any type of dedication, or can make any kind of vow, or offer up a whole free will offering, just a gift to the priest or a gift to the Most High, etc., etc., all these things pertaineth and belongeth to the priest. All right? The Levites, to be specific. Verse 15. Everything that openeth the matrix in all flesh, which they bring unto Yah, whether it be of men or of beast, shall be thine. Nevertheless, the firstborn of man shall thou surely redeem, and the firstling of unclean beast shall thou redeem. All right, so we have to redeem our sons, our firstborn sons, because we cannot put our sons on the altar, so therefore we cannot, uh, we have to redeem him. All right? Also, unclean animals. The firstborn of our unclean animals, if you're keeping such a thing, grow, have a pig farm or something like that, you can't eat it, but you can sell it to strangers. Okay, but anything that is unclean of an unclean beast, you have to redeem it. I, you have to pay for it because you cannot take an unclean thing or unclean beast such as a pig and put that on the Most High's altar. That would be an abomination. You cannot do that. Okay, now... Verse 16, and those that are to be redeemed from a month old shall thou redeem, according to thine estimation, for the money of five shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, which is twenty giras. So, to redeem your firstborn, or male, or to redeem an unclean beast, five shekels. Okay, you have to go five shekels after the estimation. According to the estimation, okay, after the shekel of the sanctuary. So it's five shekels to do that redemption, so to speak. All right? Now, verse 7. But the firstling of a cow, or the firstling of a sheep, or the firstling of a goat, thou shalt not redeem. They are holy. Thou shalt sprinkle their blood upon the altar, and shalt burn their fat for an offering made by fire, for a sweet savor unto Yah. So as you already know, once we're offering up any type of sacrifice, okay, animals, the, the animal's blood is what atones for us. We're already aware of this, and it has to be an animal of the first year. So what we cannot do, we cannot redeem the animal of the first year. Okay, you cannot pay your five gears and hold on, or your five shekels and hold on to the, uh, the firstborn. Okay, or hold on to him in his first year. Okay, he has to be put up on the altar. This is law. All right. Now, verse 18. And the flesh of them shall be thine, as the wave breast and as the right shoulder are thine. So, as we offer up these animals, there are certain portions of the animals that will go to the house of the priest. And once again, this is how he sustains himself. The fat will be burnt on the altar. Okay? And, you know, fat's burnt. The blood is also sprinkled, etc. But there's certain portions of it that is going to be eaten by the Levites. And some will be eaten, will be eaten by those who are actually dedicating or offering up uh, who's bringing up the animal. Okay? Verse 19. All the heave offerings of the holy things, which the children of Israel offer unto Yah, have I given thee. Okay? So all the heave offerings has the Most High given unto the Levites, and thy sons, and thy daughters with thee, by a statute forever. It is a covenant of salt. This covenant is made with the house of Levi, Aaron, and his sons specifically. Okay? It's a covenant of salt forever before Yah unto thee and to thy seed with thee so this covenant of salt is made with Aaron and his sons this covenant is forever okay verse 20 and Yah spake unto Aaron thou shalt have no inheritance in their land neither shalt thou have any part among them I am thy I am thine part thy part and thine inheritance among the children of Israel. So, as you should be aware of, the Levites 
have no inheritance as far as land goes. Okay? Their inheritance is the Most High Himself. Okay? The Levites, specifically the priests, are those who atone for the sins of Israel. All right? All right. Verse 20. Actually, we've already read 20. Let's uh, go ahead and uh, read verse 21. And behold, I have given the children of Levi all the tenth in Israel for an inheritance, for their service which they serve, even the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. So the house of Israel is given a tenth. Remember our forefather Jacob, our forefather Israel, he had vowed a tenth. So here, the Most High is stating clearly that he has given a tenth in Israel for an inheritance that has been given to Levi. So, excuse me. So a tenth of all that is offered out of the congregation goes directly to the priest. All right. So we are clear on how that works. Verse 22. Neither must the children of Israel henceforth come nigh the tabernacle of the congregation, lest they bear sin and die. So the children of Israel, if you are not of the Levitical house, a man from Judah just couldn't just walk up into the tabernacle. It would kill him. Okay, so anything pertaining to the tabernacle and the most highest house, etc., these things, and touching any of the holy artifacts, okay, uh, any of the holy instruments, any of the holy vessels, these things would be done by the priest, okay? And anything pertaining within the Most High's house are done by Levites. A regular person cannot touch those things and cannot go in certain areas, okay? You would be a stranger, even if you are the man of, uh, even if you're a man of Israel, a man of Judah couldn't do it, a man of Gad couldn't do it. This pertaineth or appertaineth only to the Levitical house, the priest. Verse 23. But the Levites shall do the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they shall bear their iniquity. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations, that among the children of Israel they have no inheritance. So once again, the house of Levi, they were not given any specific land, okay, at all. The most high is their inheritance, and the Levites were distributed in the midst of, of all the different countries of the house of Israel. In Gad, in Zebulun, in Asher, you had you had uh, Levites in all these many different uh, different tribes. Okay, wherever the tribes dwell, there were Levites dwelling in the midst of them. Okay, so you understand that. All right. Verse 24. But the tithe of the children of Israel, which they offer as a heave offering unto Yah, I have given to the Levites to inherit. Therefore, I have sent unto them among the children of Israel, they shall have no inheritance. So it's stating clear here, the tithe, okay? Any tithe dedicated by the children of Israel, okay? Which they offer as a heave offering unto Yah. The Most High said he has given it unto the Levites to inherit. Okay? So your tithe is to go to the Levite. So you understand that. It's not to go to the Baptist preacher, okay? It's not to go to the uh, to the Pope, okay? Or anything like that. These men are fleecing you because they're not Levites, okay? They're not in that third temple. The third temple has not been built. The Most High only had two houses, one built by Solomon, one built by Zerubbabel. Both those houses were destroyed, okay? So the, the tithe is to only be given to Levites, and these Levites has to be in the house a Yah. The Most High does not have a house in any of these nations like I've mentioned before. Okay? He only has one house, one city. And that house has been destroyed. It's not built. So anyone collecting any tithe from you right now, he's not in the house a Yah. Because Yah's house has not been built yet. That third temple has not been built. So anyone that's taking money from you is conning you and is fleecing you. Secondly, they have to be able to prove through genealogy that they are a Levite. They have to wear that me tree. 
they have to have on that ephod. They have to have on uh, that robe with a bell and a pomegranate, bell and a pomegranate. They have to have the ouches of gold, okay, with the engraving of the children of Israel on those 12 stones. They don't have any of these things, okay? These churches that you have and these synagogues, etc., and all these many nations, these are houses unto idols, and you are to be mindful of that. All right. Verse 25, And Yah spake unto Moses, saying, Now verse 26, Thus speak unto the Levites, and say unto them, When ye take of the children of Israel the tithe which I have given you from them for your inheritance, then ye shall offer up and heave offering of it for Yah, even a tenth part of the tithe. So, whatever that the house of Israel, when the congregation bring up their offerings, okay, all of that belongs to the Levites. Okay, that is their inheritance. They don't have any land, so their inheritance is everything that we take up to them. So we take up a tenth of our corn, our wine, the best of our flock, the first fruits, the wheat, the oil, whatever the case may be. We take a tenth part of that up to the priest. Okay? So a tenth of all Israel is dedicated to the priest. That is their inheritance. And that's how they eat once again, and that's how they sustain their families, as I've stated in the very first part of this video, uh, or the very first lesson of this two-part video series, okay, pertaining to tithe. Okay, so we understand clearly that as we read verse 26, okay, verse 26 reads, and we are in Numbers chapter 18, thus speak unto the Levites and say unto them, when ye take of the children of Israel the tithe which I have given you from them for your inheritance, okay, so the inheritance the tithe and anything that we dedicate, all the dedicated things that we dedicate unto the Most High, those things are actually what the inheritance is of the Levites, because they were not giving any land, okay? Then you shall offer up a heave offering of it for Yah, even a tenth part of the tithe. So whatever the priest get, okay, especially any types of gifts or anything like that, they are to take a tenth of that and offer it up. So we offer up a tenth. The priest also has to offer up a tenth of whatever it is he has. Okay, so I hope you understand that he has to offer up a heave offering of a tenth as well. All right? Verse 27. And this your heave offerings shall be reckoned unto you as though it were the corn of the threshing floor and as the fullness of the wine press. Verse 28. Thus ye also also shall offer and heave offering unto Yah of all your tithe, which ye receive of the children of Israel, and ye shall give thereof Yah's heave offering to Aaron the priest. All right. So once again, what is being reiterated here at verse 28 is that when we offer this heave offering, it is to be of our tithe. Okay? Let me read verse 28. Thus ye also shall offer a heave offering unto Yah of all your tithe. Okay, so everything in which the Levites receive, they are to offer a tenth of that up unto the Most High, which is called a heave offering. Okay, which you receive of the children of Israel. So anything that we receive 10% or a tenth of what the Levites will receive in offerings and sacrifices, etc., 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 a tenth of what they receive has to be offered up unto the Most High, okay? And you shall give thereof Yah's heave offering to Aaron the priest. All right. Verse 29. Out of all your gifts, you shall offer every heave offering of Yah. So, of all your gifts, all the gifts that the Levites receive, they are to give a tenth of that unto the Most High. All right? 
Verse 30. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, When ye have heaved the best thereof from it, then it shall be counted unto the Levites as the increase of the threshing floor, and as the increase of the wine press. So, whatever the Levites receive, a tenth they have to offer that heave offering of whatever it is they have received. Okay, that way there's no plague upon them. Okay, so they have to do their part as well. The congregation gives a tenth, and whatever of that tenth that the congregation gives the priest, the priest has to also offer up a heave offering of the tenth of what he received. All right, because if he doesn't, then plague comes upon the house of Israel, and that is not something that we want. All right. Now, verse 31, and ye shall eat it in every place, ye and your household, for it is your reward for your service in the tabernacle of the congregation. So the heave offering, all right, once the heave offering is done, okay, then you can eat it in, in any part of your household. You can take it home and you can eat. Okay, so you have to be careful. There's some things that has to be eaten specifically in the holy place. And then there's other things once that heave offering has been offered that you can actually take to your home and share with your families and things like that. Uh, some things only the clean can eat in the holy place. And then there's other things where the clean and the unclean can eat thereof. And that is like saying the priest's personal house, okay, in his personal household. All right. Uh, <clears throat> Verse 32, and ye shall bear no sin by reason of it, when ye have heaved from it the best of it. So that heave offering has to be done. You have to do that heave offering, because if you don't do that, then that priest will have to bear his sin. Okay? Let me read verse 32. And ye shall bear no sin by reason of it, when ye have heaved from it the best of it. Neither shall ye pollute the holy things of the children of Israel, least you die. Okay, so therefore, all the holy things and the dedicated things of the children of Israel that's brought up to the priest, what he cannot do, he cannot pollute any of it. Okay, an egregious sin that will get him killed. All right, so you can't pollute it. Remember the story of Eli. All right, remember the priest, the Levites, are our go-between, they are our intercessor. Through them, Okay, once we offer up our sacrifices, etc., and they take our sacrifices and offer it up to the Most High on our behalf, uh, he is altered, and that's how we can be forgiven of our trespass. However, when that Levite commits a trespass and it's egregious, such as what Eli did, the Most High killed Eli, killed his sons, and killed those in his household at a very young age. And the Most High said he would not pardon Eli no matter what. No offering he could present okay, would, uh, would pardon his house. So you have to understand that the Most High is not to be provoked in any way, shape, or form. All right, so the Levite, he has no go-between. When we mess up, we go to the Levite okay, with our offerings. And the Levite offered up, offered, uh, the offering up on our behalf before the Most High on his altar. But when the Levite messes up the priest, there is no intercessor for him. There is no buffer zone between him and the Most High. Okay, so he has to walk the straight and narrow. If not, it'll be his life. And Eli is a perfect example of that. All right? Now, so we've finished with uh, Numbers chapter 18. So we understand clearly a tenth is offered by the congregation and that is received by the priest <coughs> and when the priest the Levites receive that tenth he takes a tenth of that tenth that he's received and he offers that up okay but still this is how he eats sustains himself feeds the poor any monies dedicated uh, those monies are used to repair or pay the workers that will repair any damage or any work that's being done within the house of the Most High. All right, let's go to Nehemiah 
We'll go to Nehemiah chapter 10. Nehemiah chapter 10. All right, Nehemiah chapter 10, we will read uh, verse 32 through 39 of Nehemiah chapter 10. In Nehemiah chapter 10, we will pretty much deal with the service of the house, okay, atonement for soul, okay, as we have read uh, a few minutes ago. All right, verse 32 of Nehemiah chapter 10 reads, Also, we made ordinances for us to charge ourselves yearly with a third part of a shekel for the service of the house of Yah. So the house of Israel made an ordinance to charge a certain amount of money where each person would put up some money to ensure the restoration and the repairs, etc. Okay, the service of the house of the Most High in case something was broken, needed to be repaired, etc., etc. Verse 33 For the shoe bread, and for the continual meat offering and for the continual burnt offering of the Sabbaths, of the new moons, for the set feast, and for the holy things, and for the sin offerings, to make an atonement for Israel and for all the work of the house of our strong one, or for all or for work of the house of Yah. Okay? So <coughs> we're seeing clearly here what this money was for. Okay. This money was for the shoe bread, the continual meat offering, continual burnt offering, Sabbaths, the Sabbaths, the, the offerings on the Sabbaths, okay, on the new moons, for the set feast, for the holy things, for the sin offerings, and to make atonement for Israel. Verse 34. And we cast lots among the among the priests, the Levites, and the people for the wood offering, to bring it into the house of Yah, or into the house of our strong one. After the houses of our fathers, at the times appointed year by year, to burn unto the altar of Yah, our strong one, as it is written in the law. Verse 35. And to bring the first fruits of our ground, and the first fruits of all fruit of all trees, year by year, unto the house of Yah, or unto the house of our strong one. Verse 36. Also, the firstborn of our sons and of our cattle, as it is written in the law, and the firstlings of our herds and of our flocks, to bring unto the house of our strong one, unto the priest that minister in the house of our strong one. So, we know good and well the firstborn of our sons as well. Our, our sons are to be redeemed. We know that. We've read that a few minutes ago. Okay, We know good and well the firstborn of the first year of these animals are to be sacrificed. We know this. All the unclean animals firstborn are to be redeemed as well as our sons firstborn are to be redeemed. Okay? All right. Verse 37. We're reading until 39. And that we should bring the first fruits of our dough and our offerings and the fruit of all manner of trees, of wine and of oil, unto the priest, to the chambers of the house of our strong one, and the tithe of our ground unto the Levites, that the same Levites might have the tithe in all the cities of our tillage. Tillage. What is what, what is this referring to? All the cities of our tillage. All the cities where we grow corn and have these corn fields, where we have our vineyards, where we have our, our wheat harvest, etc., etc. So of all the cities where we grow food, we want to have all these cities to partake in this as far as gathering up the tithe of the corn, the tithe of the ground, the tithe is food. Okay? Now, verse 38. And the priest 
the sons of Aaron shall be with the Levites when the Levites take tithe <coughs> excuse me and the Levites shall bring up the tithe of the tithe unto the house of Yah to the chambers into the treasure house all right that was verse 38 treasure house the treasures the tithe etc is the food the corn the wine etc all right verse 39 for the children for the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offering of the corn of the new wine and the oil unto the chambers where are the vessels of the sanctuary and the priests that minister and the porters and the singers and we will not forsake the house of our strong all right so we're seeing clearly here that the tithe once again is the tillage of the ground okay farm products agriculture it is not money all right it is not money okay it is food because the uh, like I said before the the priest can't put your money on the altar that doesn't atone for you your money doesn't okay uh, not in this case it certainly does not all right but to be redeemed uh, when we were being numbered a certain amount of a shekel was required for that at that time okay now excuse me uh, we've read on to verse 39 let's go ahead and go to Nehemiah chapter 13 Nehemiah chapter 13 and we will read verse 4 and 5 <coughs> Nehemiah chapter 13 reading verse 4 and verse 5 okay all right verse 4 reads in Nehemiah chapter 13 and behold excuse me we are reading uh, Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 4 all right and before this Elijah the priest having the oversight of the chamber of the house of Yah was allied with Tobiah now Elijah is a priest one of the sons of Aaron he has the oversight. He's overseeing the chambers that's within the house of the Most High. The chambers is holding the corn, the wine, the flour, the wheat, all the dedicated things is what the chamber is holding. It's holding the food. That's how the Levites eat. That's how the poor eat, etc., etc. Okay? So, we see here that Elijah, who is a priest, one of the sons of Aaron, he is allied, okay? He is allied with Tobiah. Tobiah is an Ammonite. Okay? He's a hater. Enemies of our people. Okay? So, an Ammonite, that seed line is going to be removed from the earth. Ammonite, Moabite, and Canaanite. Those three seed lines will be removed. Now, since we're discussing that, let's jump to the top of... Uh, this very chapter and read where it is clearly stated that the Moabite and the Ammonite can never enter into the congregation of the Most High. So let's go from verse 4, let's move up to verse uh, verse 1, Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 1 reads, On that day that they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people, and therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of Yah forever. Moabite, Ammonite, also the Canaanite cannot do it. <coughs> okay, in the last day, the Canaanite is going to be removed as well. Why is the Ammonite and the Moabite not able to get into the Most High's congregation forever? Moab and Ammon are the sons of Lot. Remember, Lot's two daughters had sons by him they had made him drunk okay and the sons that they bore were Moab and Ammon and that's who Tobiah is he is an Ammonite now I want you to keep in mind that 
Lot's two daughters laying with him while he was drunk and produced Moab and Ammon. They are what you call seeds of incest. And that's why they will not be allowed to remain on the earth. Okay? As well as Canaan. Okay? Canaanites also. Incest seed, it will be removed. All right? So we've got that. All right. Now, let me give you a quick setup of this scenario here. Nehemiah is coming back from captivity, okay? The house of Israel is coming back from captivity. We're building this wall in Jerusalem <coughs> because the walls were broken down, all right? Many people that's coming back into the land who are Israelites do not know the law. Ezra had to read them the law, explain the law to them, okay? Because they did not know the law and they were not doing the law. And that's why they were carried away captive, all right? And so now they're being allowed to come back into the land to build that second temple, all right? And also to build up the walls of Jerusalem, all right? But they were unfamiliar with the law, all right? So now, <coughs> I'm saying that to say this. We are currently in captivity across many nations of the earth, scattered to the four corners. Now, let's go ahead and cover exactly what our forefathers did when they came back into the land from captivity and the law was being read to them, explained to them, uh, and instilled upon them for the first time. Let's see exactly what they had to do. Let's, uh, we're still in the same chapter, Nehemiah chapter 13, uh, and we'll read verse 3. And verse 3 reads, Now it came to pass, when they had heard the law, that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. So, once that law was read to them, and they understood clearly that they were not to give their daughters unto strangers, nor give their sons unto strangers. Once they understood clearly that they were not to vote a stranger to rule over them. Okay? And they understood clearly the words of the Most High. And they were not to take part in the customs of those strangers around them. Around them. And they were not to walk after the ways, i.e. the customs and the gods of those strangers. Then what Israel had to do was separate themselves from the mixed multitude, from the strangers. So as, we hear, as we're beginning to hear this word and learn it in the midst of the many nations in which we dwell currently, in the places where we have been scattered, the first thing we're going to have to do as we take a hold of this law, we're going to have to remove ourselves from the ways of the heathen. All right? Remove ourselves from their customs, their ways, and certainly from their idols. All right? So we will have to do as our forefathers have done. Now, the most I said clearly, <coughs> excuse me, the most I said clearly, he will return and gather us. He will sift us out of these many nations. Okay? So if he's going to remove us and separate us and take us out of these many different lands, and it's not going to be done by rapture, it's going to be done by airplane. So you understand that. Okay, we're not just going to vanish up in the sky someplace. We're going to be taken on swift beasts, chariots, i.e., planes, boats, etc. All right, that's how we're going to be taken back to the land. All right, but before all of these things take place, before he can separate us and sift us out of these nations, the first thing is going to have to happen. We're going to have to let go and separate ourselves from the ways of these nations. Just so that is understood. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Let's get back to Eliashib, okay? Eliashib is the most highest priest, okay? And he has allied himself, okay, with a man by the name of Tobiah. And Tobiah is an Ammonite, okay? So you have a priest that's actually in collusion with an idolater, number one. And with someone who cannot get into the most highest congregation ever. So you know that's a no-no. All right. <clears throat> Verse 5. And he prepared for him a great chamber. Where aforetime they laid the meat offerings, the frankincense, and the vessels, and the tithe of the corn, the new wine, and the oil which was commanded to be given to the Levites. And the singers and the porters, and the offerings of the priest. So, you see the word here, aforetime. All right? 
So what this verse is stating that Eliashib, the Most High's priest, he is buddying up with Tobiah and Ammonite, <coughs> one of the haters of our people. That, that means us no good, okay? And what it's stating here is that the priest Eliashib, he actually took one of the chambers that held all of the meat offerings, the frankincense, all the, the holy vessels, okay, the tithe, the corn, the wine, the oil. He took the chamber that stored those things, and he took Tobiah's personal belongings and put it in there. This is in the most high house in the chamber. <coughs> so a priest took the personal belongings of an Ammonite and is storing it in a chamber in the Most High's house. Can you imagine that wickedness for a second? Okay, now, verse 6. <coughs> Excuse me. But in all this, but in all this time was, was not I at Jerusalem? For in the two and thirtieth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, and after certain days obtained I leave from the king, okay, or leave of the king. So Artaxerxes <coughs> gave Nehemiah to go ahead so he can actually go and, and rebuild that wall at Jerusalem. Now keep in mind, Nehemiah is the governor. But it's a puppet government because Artaxerxes is running the show. All right, so this is what happens to the house of Israel. Once we disobey and we don't do the things that are right, we are kicked out of the land. And for those of us who are able to come back to it or in it, okay, we're in the land, but we're still, we're subjects to foreigners, okay? They are ruling over us. And the only reason why that could ever be possible is because we're walking contrary to the Most High's law, and that is it. Excuse me. Now let's read verse 7, okay? And and I came to Jerusalem and understood the evil that Elijah <coughs> did for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the course of the house of Yah. So in the course of the house of the Most High, a priest, Elijah, prepared a chamber and held the personal belongings of Tobiah and Ammonite. <coughs> so hope you're understanding now why that second temple was destroyed and why the Most High said clearly that from the time we laid the first brick in that temple, okay, that we pretty much we were, we were unclean, we were polluted. Okay, that's why you won't read any place where he laid his name in that temple or any big dedication to where he actually came down and, and the smoke <coughs> or the cloud made the Levites leave. They had to get out the building, so to speak. As with the as, as with the uh, the temple with Solomon, okay, the, the dedication of Solomon was entirely different than the dedication of this second temple. That's why it was made plain that this temple, the second temple, was as nothing, okay. It was as nothing compared to the first one that was built by Solomon. <coughs> All right, so we see here where the priest is leading us astray. That's the leadership. Okay, all right, uh, let me see where we are here. We're reading Nehemiah 30, we read 12. Let's go down to, uh, let's go down to verse 12 of the same chapter, verse 12 and verse 13. Verse 12 and verse 13 of Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah chapter 13, and we'll read verse 12. And verse 12 reads, <coughs> Then brought Judah, or then brought all Judah, the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil unto the treasuries. So, <coughs> the treasure is food. So you see here they brought the tithe. Tithe of what? Tithe of $20 bills, $50 bills, $100 bills, Benjamins? No. Verse 12 of Nehemiah. 
chapter 13 reads, Then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil unto the treasuries. So the treasure house has food in it. <coughs> okay? Not people's checks. All right. Verse 13. And I made treasures over the treasuries. Shemaniah, okay, the priest, and Zadok, the scribe, and of the Levites, Bediah, and next to him was Hanan, the son of Zakur, the son of Mataniah, for they were counted faithful, and their office was to distribute unto their brethren. So these men were treasurers over the treasury. All right, so of all the stuff that's stored in the chambers, these men distributed those to their brothers, the Levites. That way they got what their families needed in order to sustain themselves. They weren't cutting checks, sitting in the back, splitting up the money. So you understand that hustle. All right. So we understand clearly. Verse 12 and verse 13, which once again implies to us clearly, lets us know clearly what the tithe is. It is the tillage of the ground. All right. OK. <coughs> OK. Uh, now we've got we did 13. All right. I think that pretty much uh, that pretty much covers. Yes, that covers all the things that I wanted to cover pertaining to dealing with tithe. Once again, I've covered the instances in this uh, segment here, where in this lesson you see clearly when money was given to redeem. The firstborn, okay, and we know clearly <coughs> it was also given to redeem the firstborn of an unclean beast. We also read clearly where money was given to redeem members of the house of Israel when we were numbered. And we see clearly and know clearly that the money was used for all the dedicated things and taking care of the temple and service of the temple, etc. The Levites didn't take it and go buy jets with it and benzes, <coughs> okay, and helicopters and have six houses, okay, six mansions across the United States and, and five other vacation re resorts while those who come and give them the money are struggling day to day, okay, so. We understand, we should understand a few things. Number one, all the tithe, the tithe was food to sustain the priest, <clears throat> to sustain the poor, etc. The tithe was food. <coughs> the tillage of the ground. The tithe was given to the sons of Aaron. They were given to the priest, the Levites. That's who it was given to. It wasn't given to the guy that went to seminary school. wasn't wasn't given to him. wasn't given to the Baptist church guy. It wasn't given to the Seventh Day Adventist or the Catholic or the Mormon. These are Levites. You can't find a Mormon, a Catholic, or a Christian anywhere out of the mouth of any prophet from Genesis to Malachi. Those are real prophets. That's the book of the law and the prophets. Okay, so. Unless this third temple, if this third temple, when, when it's up, if you happen to be in the land and the third temple is up and real Levites are in there with the Metreon, okay, <clears throat> with the linen ephod on, ouches of gold, okay, have those 12 stones with the, the engraving of the children of Israel on it, okay, have on the robe with the, the bell and the pomegranate, the bell and the pomegranate, <coughs> real life. Real Levites, real priests in the Most Highest Temple in that one city 
where the Most High chose to raid to, to lay His name, which is in Zion. If you are there at that time, those are the guys, those are the people, those are the individuals that you take your offerings up to, not to the people that's within the many nations in which you dwell, because the Most High has never had a house in the nation in which you dwell. You can call it a church, a synagogue, or whatever else. That is not the Most High's house. The Most High's house has not been rebuilt yet. And that will be the third temple. And every nation that's allowed to live will have to go up to that one spot and ask to be taught the Most High's law. Read Isaiah chapter 2 or make that clear. The law will go forth from Zion. So if you're uttering such foolishness as there is no law, you will find out clearly that everyone, all the nations, will have to appear before the Most High once a year or send representatives there once a year to his house. And there's only, that's only one place in one city, in one nation. That is Israel, city of Zion or city of David. Okay, so you are to be mindful of that. Everyone has to go up there. The children of Israel will have to appear before the Most High three times a year. <coughs> All the males. All right, so this covers tithe so you know exactly. Ensure that you are not being taken advantage of because of your lack of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. If you choose to give someone your money because you want to or you have nothing else better to do, that's fine. But what you need to understand clearly is if you're going to spend your money, spend some time going into this book. That way you make sure you're giving it to the right person. And unless you're in this land in that third temple, you are not giving it to the right person. Just so you know. But if someone is helping you or you're looking at some videos or going to the class or whatever and you want to decide to uh, give that person a gift or whatever and it's monetary, that is your option. As for this channel and myself, I don't care for any money from anyone. I will teach this law, statute, judgment, and precinct of the Most High for free. As he gives me this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in which I can share it with you and it be understandable to where you can gain some knowledge of, on how you can turn to the Most High with your whole heart and your whole soul, therein lies the reward right there. I have a job. I don't need to actually monetize a channel or ask anyone for money. Okay, and I can't read anywhere in here where any of the prophets of the Most High <coughs> was asking the children of Israel for money when they were actually teaching this law, encouraging them to do it, and contending with them that they should do it. And anyone that's doing it in truth and righteousness will not be asking you for money. Anyway, Israel, it is currently 1248 on the East Coast. Okay, it is a Sabbath day. I wish you all a blessed Sabbath day. Continue to uh, do the things that are right in the sight of the Most High. Ensure that you keep the Most High Sabbath day holy, doing the things that are right in His sight. And as you know, the Feast of Tabernacles, uh, <coughs> blowing of the trumpets, uh, coming up here in a few days. So I hope you all are being prepared for that. Uh, and uh, once again, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Stay in the Most High's law. Continue to call upon His name, facing Jerusalem, lifting your hands in prayer. Give the Most High no rest that he may shake the earth. Okay, and he will bring his judgment for light to the people. Blessed be the name of Yah the King. Peace, Israel.